Hey guys, thanks for tuning in and in today's video I will be answering your questions you have for me about my MG4 and MG in general. For now I have picked out 10 of what I think will be of most value, but if you have any more questions please let me know in the comments section below and I'll be happy to answer them in a follow up video. I also want to say a big thank you to everyone who took time and submitted a question to me. So the first question is, have you had any maintenance issues? Well, with the exception of a couple of manufacturer defects covered by warranty, no. There is very little to do on this car other than maintaining tyre pressures and topping up windscreen wash. And even that's a small job, there's only one reservoir to fill with no rear wiper. No lubricants or oils need changing, however MG recommend an MG service once a year or every 15,000 miles, whichever comes first. However, MG recommend every 30,000 miles a pollen filter, key batteries and a brake fluid change. I've used lane assist in many cars now and I have to say the MG4s is nowhere near a polished product and it doesn't add any value to my driving or safety for example so I generally have it switched off all the time. Now, I know it can be a little unreliable and a little bit sketchy as I demonstrate in this video. Check out the ping-ponging. Also on occasions it has a tendency to pull the steering wheel to the left or the right and, and that can be quite a hairy moment. But in terms of a safety product it's just more hassle than it's probably worth and it's easier just to switch it off. I guess the next question is should it always be activated? Well it's part of a safety suite on this vehicle and I'm sure that affects its Euro NCAP 5 star award. But it is software related and MG could always introduce an option to be able to quickly and efficiently switch it off as and when. Three, what is your experience with MG dealerships? I have dealt with three different dealerships, two of which I used initially when sourcing the car. It was a case of picking the one which allowed me to get into the vehicle first as I had no car at the time. Both were very helpful and kept me in the loop of developments. Of course, one of those dealerships I continued a relationship with and purchased my MG4 standard range with. They actually got me in the vehicle quicker than originally planned. If you haven't seen any of my previous videos, I have a couple of manufactured defects on my MG4. It was very clear straight away, the after sales is very different to the sales side in this dealership. It's actually a Vauxhall repair center, as I believe many others with MG are. And it was very clear straight away, I'd have to chase for a service date, which there was many calls to organize. One of the issues which I had asked to look at circular scratches in the C-pillar wasn't carried out at all while they had my car for over 24 hours. I chased for updates on replacement parts and it was very, very difficult to try and get answers. At the beginning of this year in 2023, I had an advisory recall from MG and it stated I could get this done at any MG dealership. So I actually contacted my local, which is Gloucester, which is just a few miles away. The level of service here was much more tentative and they promoted calling to discuss issues or, or general queries on my car. A light year difference from the former dealership south for me. Since this visit, they have now taken over all the warranty repairs, including a new issue which requires a replacement dashboard. Up until now, they've kept me full in the picture. I'm really happy to announce this week that MG have now received the parts and they'll be fitting into my car very shortly. And if you're really enjoying this video, a like and a sub to the channel would be wonderful. So on to the fourth question, how do you get on with no rear wiper? I'd say 99% of the time there's no issues. During general driving, the airflow running over this car disperses most water beading and rain to a point where my visibility isn't impaired. I don't use the interior mirror often unless I'm checking blind spots or reversing. 
You may find in very slow traffic, you may have to look through the water droplets in, on the window, but it doesn't move until you're at high speed. And although it's there, you can see through it. I'd say the 1% is reversing in the dark. However, the parking sensors are great on this car and I'd say are slightly oversensitive, so you shouldn't have to worry about bumping into things. On the SE model, there's a lip on the boot. At first, I thought this was just purely down to aerodynamics, but it's actually soon become apparent that this stops any muck from the road spraying up onto the rear window. Since taking ownership of my MG4, I don't think, apart from a general wash of the whole car, I've ever had to make a conservative effort to clear the rear windscreen, thus not needing a rear wiper. If you do want a more clearer screen, you can apply third-party products like Rain-X to help water disperse quicker and keep it clear. Question number five, how large is the boot in centimetres? Well, capacity-wise, it's 363 litres. Now, that will change when you put the back seats down. But in terms of the actual dimensions, let's go through them now. So you've got 96 centimetres across, or just under 38 inches. The depth is 76 centimetres, or 30 inches. Sixty-one inches or one hundred and fifty-five centimeters. One hundred and seventy-two centimeters and sixty-eight inches. One hundred and twenty-seven centimeters and fifty inches across. Seventy-five centimeters and twenty-nine and a half inches. So there you have all the measurements by centimetres and inches. I hope that helps. Question number six, have you experienced any breather oil issues? Well, I haven't had any issues at all with my SE standard range, but I know it has affected a minority out there. But fortunately, touch wood, that doesn't change in my situation. Question number seven, what's the maximum charge speed on the MG4 standard range and long range? My MG4 is the standard range model which comes with an onboard charger which is 6.4 kilowatts. This means that your maximum speed you can reach on an AC charger is going to be 6.4 kilowatts. The maximum DC speed from the current literature in Europe is 85 kilowatts although I have received 88 kilowatts. On the long range model, the MG4 has an 11 kilowatt onboard AC charger, which means you can receive as much as 11 kilowatts. DC charge and speeds are advertised at 135 kilowatts. However, many owners have informed me they have reached 140. So on to question number eight, which is have you experienced any phantom braking with your MG4? Now just to clarify what phantom braking is, it's where the car applies the emergency brake without any input from yourself. And in most occasions this wouldn't be an issue whatsoever. But because it happens without your input and you are not aware it's going to happen, it can be very frightening. In some other cars like the Tesla Model 3 and Y, it can happen for no apparent reason as I've experienced on many occasions. I've only witnessed this once in my MG4, but it was kind of a reactive situation. I was beginning a manoeuvre overtaking a bus which had pulled over at a bus stop. As I was the only driver around, I didn't indicate, and as the car was moving out and in line with the bus's rear lights, the emergency brakes went on. Although this isn't a process I'd like to relive very often, it's great to see the safety functions doing its job. On to question eight, do I experience any battery loss when the car is parked a few days or more? This also comes under the heading phantom battery drain. So when you're not using the car, it does still use some of the electronic systems like the BMS to manage the battery. And of course, when that happens, the car needs to source the energy. So the car will use energy in the background. 
but if you are looking to leave your car while you're going on holiday or you're not using it for a few days i would expect to see one percent maybe even two percent for a week's worth of parking of course if you are dialing into the car via the app to check on its progress on the battery that's also going to wake the car and that's also going to use more energy as well but i wouldn't expect it to use much battery at all and when i've been away and left the car for a week it's only lost a couple of percent so on to question nine what's your favorite feature about the mg4 and as it did on the day i test drove it it's got to be how good it drives i mean it really is good and uh, it would give most premium cars in its segment a run for its money it's really well planted it's pokey it leaves a smile on your face and it handles potholes and the awful english roads superbly so if i could add one feature to the mg4 which is currently missing and not just on the sc spec this is throughout their whole product line of this car and having spent time in the zs ev and also owning a tesla model 3 as well it has to be a glass roof or a panoramic roof now on the mg zs ev the actual sunroof also opens up as well so it's very old school motorized push up and move backwards style and i just really love sunroofs i haven't had one in a car for about 15 years and I just think that they're a great feature to have. They let loads of natural light in. They open up the cabin, they make it feel more spacious. It's obviously warmer in summer as well. And I just think it's a really nice thing to have in your car. So that's what I would add if I could add it to the features list. And that's it for the Q&A in this video. Now I did mention I did need to consolidate it down to 10 questions. So if I have missed one of your questions, please drop it down in the comments. Or if you've got a new question following this video, again, drop it down in the comments and I'll make notes of these for the next Q&A video. And of course, if you really enjoy the video, a like and a subscribe to the channel would be wonderful. Thanks for tuning in and I shall see you again in the next one. Thank you.